last part. Day two. Hi, I'm Ultimate. Christy. And I'm Daniel. And we run the family travel blog and Instagram Local Passport Family. We have five kids ranging from ages one to ten, and we've been RVing for almost a year. And here's some pro tips for how you can help your kids get acquainted with RV life. So a big part of how we got our kids acquainted to RV life during COVID is really being on the road. We didn't make an impulse decision, but it was a pretty quick process from when we started thinking about the RV to when we actually purchased it. I would say it was about three to four weeks to when we first started considering the idea to when we actually bought our RV and got on the road. So a lot of our real learning really happened as we were on the road, kind of growing together and experiencing RV life together. So our kids actually taught us as much as we taught them in terms of what worked for schedules, bedding situations, getting out and about with the RV and all those kinds of things. Yeah, kids are like sponges. And so adapting to a new environment is life when you're young. So our tip is don't be afraid to just start and try it out. I feel like I felt a lot of trepidation in terms of getting going. I, I'm a planner and I wanted to know everything beforehand. But really with RVing, there's no way to know everything until you've actually experienced it. And the best way to learn it is just by doing it. It's a lot easier than you're probably afraid it is. So I felt like when we first left in the RV during that week when we were getting out to grandparents, we felt a lot of concern with, you know, how often do we need to fill up water or how often do we need a dump? And we felt like we needed to be pretty conservative so we would never run out of water, you know. But then we recognized that it lasts us longer than we realized that it would. So it felt like boondocking became a lot easier as we headed out on our adventure after. We were able to go for a few days and not really worry. We had the facilities and the supplies that we needed. When you are planning a trip for the kids, you want to make sure that they have enough to keep them engaged and occupied while you're on the road. And certainly when you're making those stops, it's super easy to bring on some simple you know, baseball equipment or the soccer ball or something they are ready to go. Um, we were actually road schooling as well, so we wanted to make sure that they had their laptops with them and we had enough of a battery pack so that we could always be charging uh, while they were on the road. And that made it really possible to stay connected kind of no matter where we were to their classroom, also while we're headed to family, um, yeah, that made a big difference. It's really important to keep in mind that while active learning is absolutely important and necessary and also very possible in an RV, um, we have connections, we have a booster that allows us to access the signal so they could stay connected and read books. We download books all the time. All of that is wonderful, but it's also really important to remember that so much education happens while we're out and about together. So while we do want to supplement with some specific learning like math and books and that kind of thing, I want my kids to be able to explore organically and learn organically as well. You don't always need to know exactly where you're going to be the next day. You don't always need to know that you have this stop it needs to happen by this certain time. We definitely had a number of places where we loved it so much, so we were able to just extend our stay by a few days. We could spend some more time exploring through the Junior Ranger books or getting out in nature and learning about the plants and animals in that area. And so that flexibility definitely contributes to the learning as far as we've experienced. Every child is different, but if you learn what's important to your child, I think you realize they probably don't require as much stimulus as we probably are ready to give them as parents. We're always well stocked with books. We have a bunch, of, we have a mini suitcase of physical books that we always keep with us. But then we also have a Kindle device. Our kids have school um, Chromebooks and they're allowed to download books on theirs. So we use library apps to let them stay well stocked with books. And so they go through a lot of reading and they always can stay up to date with that. And they also have some easy building toys that they keep in their seats that allow them to build those tactile muscles and um, keep their um, imagination strong as well. So the tip is really to find what your child connects with, what is exciting to them and what motivates them. So if they want to be able to spend time climbing rocks on a hike, one of our children really loves to do that. You know, if we get out early, if everyone helps and we can get out on time, we'll have more time to climb rocks. Or you can pick out the movie for movie night. You can decide what we're gonna eat for dinner, whatever your child loves. Um, those are all ways to help encourage everyone to participate and make it a great experience for the whole family. We hope you found some of these RV pro tips useful to help you and yours get out on the road. 
Be sure to check out other RV pro tips from other RV influencers and take your RV knowledge to the next level. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV Show. We're having a little bit too much fun up here. What's up? It's Chris Young, joined by my friends and contestants yes. for the rest of the week. And you know, when we started, you're just friends. But now you're contestants. By the way, how does everybody feel after that that first kayak race? Are you ready for day two's competition? Still getting yeah. over that loss. It's, we're kind of like frenemies, I guess, now. I okay. Mean, I'm All feeling right. attention yeah, It's kind of tough yeah. to be this close to these right. uh, competitors here. Well, I mean, it's it's all for a chance to win the beautiful Nepalu boat, which you see out in the lake behind us, uh, which is great for it. kids. Great for just regular old couples that want to go out. But the reason why I wanted to bring you guys here this afternoon was we have a lot of people that are experiencing RVing for the first time, that are experiencing how great it can be, the lifestyle. And a lot of them have questions about kids from babies all the way up to almost adults. And I thought, since you guys had a little bit of time, let's talk a little bit about how we can get the kids excited about RVing. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, can we yeah. lean on that expertise? <laughs> it's our lives. <laughs> yep. As we're holding our children. Under. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> under blankets and eating snacks. So if you're following along with us right now on social media and you want to ask something, be sure to throw your comment down below. We'll try to get to them as best we can, but we do have some that we have picked. And guys, we're going to get rocking and rolling right here. Uh, really good one to start off with. Does the RV type matter? And if so... What's the best RV for kids? Keith, I'm going to start with you since you're furthest away from me right now. Well, that's a great question. I don't necessarily think it matters. I think what matters is what's best for your family. Okay. And depending on the age of your child, that may change. Mm -hmm. We have a Class A diesel pusher, a big RV, and it's perfect for us. Is everything perfect? No. Right. We do make it work the best we can, and we seem to enjoy it each and every time we're in it. Right. Bryce and Nellie? That's funny. We actually started in a class A and just had our one bedroom because she was, you know, almost three months old when we left. She didn't need a room, you know? Right, right. She couldn't even walk. But we actually moved to a fifth wheel because it does have a separate room and we have a deck that goes down. So that's toy hauler. really nice. Yeah. Yes. And the toy hauler, we have the deck that goes down so the girls can be outside and play and we know where they are. And that's actually been a huge win for us. Okay. Bryce, anything to add? I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, it's kind of similar to just like renting a home or buying a home in right. some ways where you're going to find things there and you're like, you know what? I might change a little bit to make it feel like home or, or sure. you figure out how to work. Whatever rooms are available, your kids figure it out. Sure. Similar thing with RV. Okay. All right, Dan and Lindsay, what do you think? For us, well, first of all, we're still learning. I'm sitting here like, okay, take notes, Because right, right. <laughs> we have a four-month-old, so... um. The biggest thing for us was just space. We just wanted to make sure we felt comfortable with our dogs and the baby. And so we did get a different RV as we, you know, got baby boy. And um, we just pictured, okay, what do we do in the house? Where's where's his space? Um, and we tried to recreate that in the RV. So we put a little changing station on the dresser area that you'll find in a lot of RVs. And then right. we just made sure we had a spot for his bassinet, found a tiny little side table that fits between the bed and the wall. Mm -hmm. And that's really all he needed. And, you know, I'm sure when we get to the preteen stage, we'll reconsider. And right, right. Yeah. And then the only other thing that I think was important for us was not just the space for miles, mm -hmm. but also how having a child in the RV was going to impact the other spaces that we need. So for us, we work from the road. Okay. So the RV that we got, it was really important to make sure that there was a door between where Miles could be and where I or we would be working. So right. that was just something, I, okay. a small thing that we wanted to make sure that way if there are comp, you know, situations where maybe he's napping, he can be back there and, and, and stay quiet. Or if he starts crying, then he can be back there and not interrupt the phone conversation or whatever. So right. that was something we thought about too. Now, Tia, would you say separation of space is key <laughs> as well? Because be you know, I'm, I'm big on it. I love my separation of space. You know, I, I thought that would be more important to us, uh -huh. but I found that we've come together as a family, just the times and the, the moments that we shared together. In fact, when we go home, the boys will typically huddle around in the oldest boy's room and spend the night there for the next couple of nights when we get home. So the space is not really, you know, the important factor. It's okay. how we come together as a family. It's just brought us really close. Okay. 
But Chris, I like the fact that our bedroom has a door that closes off yes. from the kids. Yes. They have their space, we have our space. And I think one of the things Tia's done in our in our class A is she's carved out little spaces for the boys. So they each have something that they want, that they like, that's theirs, whether it's the Legos or the blanket from their bed that they bring with them in the RV, whatever it is, everyone has their own little thing, that little piece of space of the door that's their own. That's beautiful. And but you think it's absolutely vital and important that if you're gonna be picking one out, bring the kids along. Let them check it out. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Our kids love RV shows, love going into RVs. I mean, they're jumping on every bed. We have to calm them down, relax. Okay, it's not ours. We haven't bought it. So, But I think it's, it's part of the fun as a family. If you get yeah. them involved in all stages of it, they'll have that ownership in it. That's beautiful. Now, another follow-up question to that one is, do you need an RV that has bunks if you have more than one kid? Is it essential to have bunks? Bryce and Ellie, you got two kids. You know what? I say no. I mean, we don't have bunks and we could have picked any layout we wanted, but we chose not to have bunks and it's worked out fine so far. Although when we renovate, we will have bunks, but they got three <laughs> boys. I know you guys' situation is a little different, so I'm curious to hear you. Three is a crazy number. I mean, two you can manage. When you're outnumbered, everything gets thrown <laughs> off with that third child. And They all sleep in tents outside, don't they? I don't mean, lie. I wish that day's coming, I'm telling you. Um, Tia really has wanted bunks from the first time we got our RV, first RV. Always talked about, whenever we look at another RV, it's, you know, does it have bunks? But we have made it work. We like, like we took out our booth dinette and mm -hmm. created three separate sleeping areas for the boys. I know you were talking about making your own. I think that's the biggest key. Yeah. Whatever RV you get, you can make some changes and make it fit your family's needs, which will change over time. Right. It may work out perfect when you buy it, but a year from now, as they get bigger, you may look at those bunks and say, oh, you know what? You may have tall girls. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we have right. tall boys. The standard bunks won't fit them in a couple of years. So we had to make a decision on not just today, but on the future of what's best for our family. Mm -hmm. Nice. So here's one that I know is paramount on people's minds and that I think everybody's gone through. How do I get my kids excited about RVing when they seem to spend so much time on electronics. So Bryce and Nellie, I, I, I know your girls are a little bit smaller and Avi's seen all 50 states. Mm -hmm. So she's obviously probably excited anyway, but how did you like, how do you keep them excited? How'd you get them excited? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't know electronics starting off, you know? <laughs> right, like, right. But um, getting, talking about the experiences you're going to have mm -hmm. um, and with traveling with them and being in an RV with them, it became more about the moments. Um, one thing that I loved is there was many times where we'd be going on the road and we could tell like, okay, Nellie and I could have driven for another few hours, but they were done. And so we look up a park, you know, and we're like, you know what, let's go and hang out there. And if they love it for a few hours, we'll just stay the night in this area. No big deal. And so making sure just to throughout it all, follow their energy. If, if you can tell they need a break and just whatever, go with that versus being so focused on the destination and right. checking the box. But, but as you get them involved, I think that's the main trick. No matter the age, if they're involved, like you were talking yesterday with their studies, like they were studying different places and then you go there and actually see it firsthand. Yes, that's huge. How, and they go back to school or if they're still homeschooled, but if they go back to school and say, I actually went there where we're studying, like game changer. Right. Keith and Tia, how'd you get the boys excited about it? Well, my boys are closer to the preteen ages and, um, well, they're in the preteens <laughs> and they love their electronics. Don't get me wrong. Um, we haven't been able to wean them off of it when we're at home. But once we hit that RV, you know, we'll allow them to do the electronics when we're driving because that keeps them occupied. Are we there yet? We don't have those problems. Right. They can ride. We can, we've done Florida trips for like 10 hours. We've driven and they've been fine. But once we hit that campground, it's all about the experiences. Keith does an amazing job of planning. He plans way ahead and he gets the kids involved in the planning. So we find out what's going to be around in the area that we're camping in, what excursions, what activities, what museums, get them involved in all of that. And they're ready to go as soon as we, we uh, hit the campground. Nice. So, so it, it seems like the experience and the adventure is, is really what will kind of just 
tune them back into it. But that's, yeah. that's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. And, and try to plan things or, or take advantage of things. This beautiful campground we're at right now, there's a lot of wildlife. Our, our son, Jason, his favorite animal is a white-tailed deer. Don't ask me why he adopted that, but he did. And each night we're here, we hop on the golf cart and we've gone through the woods and we've spotted deer after deer and his face just lights up. Oh, that's so awesome. he just constantly, Dad, can we go look for more deer? Can we go look for more deer? So it's not about the electronics. It's about he just wants to get out there in nature and experience that and see his favorite animal. That's beautiful. Now, Dan and Lindsay, uh, how hard is it to travel with infants? I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just different. We always say that. It's just, you know, babies, children, they change your life. It just makes everything different, but not hard. It is more enjoyable too. Um, of course, there's challenges. Of course, we have to prepare more. Um, we go a little bit slower. But I mean, you're listening to you guys, it's just so rewarding. Even at four <laughs> months old. Right. We step outside and the trees, you know, just dipping his toes in the water. Right. There's just the moments. The but, but what are some moments. of those planning changes that you got to yeah. go through when, when preparing for the travel? Like I said, going slower. We can't. Okay. We used to sometimes do five to seven hour driving days and kind of go crazy and want to get places quickly. But now it's like, okay, we have to kind of work with his feeding schedule and we can only go about maybe two hours before we have to stop. Um. Like we're saying, the little modifications, making sure that he's comfortable in the RV. It's not just about us. And then also planning into the things that we're doing too. So not just the travel days. Of course, we have to plan for that. But, you know, if we're going to go to a national park, for example, it looks a little different now with Miles than it did before. Right. Um, you know, we maybe can't do some of the hikes that we did before at this point. And we just told, we just, so we just went to um Bryce Canyon and Zion and those parks and and it was kind of fun because we just said you know we have another reason to come back now because we didn't get to do the some of the trails that we really wanted um so we have to plan logistically for that bringing food all that stuff um but yeah it's it's not it's not harder it's just different but like Lindsay said it's been really really enjoyable so far and we're excited to continue RVing with Miles you know forever right so. right well I mean yeah at, at four months he's gonna learn you know, on the road, which is, which is awesome. He's going to be living it. Yeah. And I up. do think like to Bryce's point, one thing, um, we have had to do is, is, you know, you, you get a sense for how much that they can travel and what they can take. And when he's done, it's, it's time to stop. You know, I mean, we're not going to just keep driving and driving while he's screaming back there. So, right. um, that part being a little bit more flexible is, is a little bit different than it was for us before. Okay. Yeah. Bryce a lot. Nelly, yeah. Same thing. Is it a lot less stressful. You don't have to, Oh, Speaking of, hello. <laughs> I don't know if you heard her. Hi. Um, but it's a lot less stressful because it's like, oh, you can boondock, you can pull over. If you're a good SAM member, you can stay overnight at a camping world. Right. You know, like the, easier to do that than now we got to find a hotel and now we got to do this. And having an RV just makes it easier in that way to be able to pull these audibles or mm -hmm. detours. And, um, Another thing too, as you were talking, Lindsay, it reminded me when Avi first stepped into an ocean and like when we had that experience in Florida and South Carolina and then clear up in Maine even, just so good. Right. Those experiences and we look back at those pictures and she talks about it and gets excited for the next new thing that we're going to see and experience. Yeah, I think Miles has been to what five national parks now, and he's not even five months old. Wow! So it's really fun to just you know one a month, huh? One, one a month. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're working hard. Yeah, and I but you know just that. to have that opportunity to look back at those photos and say, Miles, you've done this like you were there. You know, it, it it's really rewarding. I think to the point to your point, both of you actually, I I remember back to those times when we had all toddlers, you know, and just having all of their things with us, having the space to have all of their things with us, not having to carry it to an airport and all of that mm. and the cumbersome nature of, of just having a child and all of their things. It's a lot easier in an RV and a campsite. You have all of their things. You can spread out, give them space to enjoy their surroundings. And I just think that's just a marvelous part of RVing. So it sounds like it's just easier to travel with infants because A, you're in your own home and their stuff's going to be there anyway. The sooner the better. Okay. Amy knows they neither of them know anything different, and so it's all good. That's beautiful. Get them, now, just get them going. Yeah, just keep them going. So, what are some of the best campgrounds for little kids 
And what amenities should I look for that I might not think about? I think that's a good part because you guys have had a chance to go through the campgrounds, go through a lot of the spaces, and probably have discovered some amenities that you didn't even think about, but now are something that are added to the list. So if folks are asking and looking for the first time, what are some of those? Jerky's, I'm going to go right back Got to you guys. a whole list of them. <laughs> okay, they have to have a, a playground or at least a playground nearby. Mm-hmm. Santa Mari Parks don't have them, and it's kind of a bummer. They have everything but a playground, and you're like, why? Um, hiking trails is always nice because that always keeps the kids busy. They can just go run off or, you know, whatever. It's just always nice to get kids out in nature. And then if they, we can be by water of any sort, river, lake, ocean, beach, you name it, pool. Like generally, if you have those three things, I feel like kids are just good. Okay. All right. Keith and Tia? Our boys are like fish. They love a pool, ocean, any water. So I think that is like the biggest thing that we look for. I know Keith likes to do the hiking trails and I go out with the kids on that. So that's, that's a lot of fun. I have. <laughs> Don't tell me short. <laughs> All those things are, are great. Uh, if they have, like you said, a playground is good. Some kind of play thing, whether it be a jumping pillow, uh, any, any water. You've already mentioned that. Being able to jump in a tube and just head on down the river is something that's fantastic. Sometimes the hay rides are great. We love having a fire pit, whether it be a group fire pit, Mm -hmm. which is great to meet other families or by your campground. I mean, because our boys, every time we go, hey, dad, are we doing s'mores? Okay, well, yes, do them at least one night. Yes, yes. So (laughs) all those things bring your family together and bring it with other families together so the kids get an opportunity to meet each other. Right. Dana Lindsay? Also, Ad, we do a lot of camping with our nieces and nephews, Mm -hmm. and campgrounds now have theme weeks and they have crafts and all these planned activities and they our nieces and nephews do crafts and bring all this stuff home it's like yeah it's like daycare right there oh that's beautiful so there's two in colorado we've been to already this year that just it's like kid heaven so just check the campground to to see if they got like a schedule of events that uh, you might be able to pick up on when you get there yeah that's a great point Bryce? We didn't think about that much when she was really little, you know, and you have the nieces and nephews helps with that. Mm-hmm. We pulled into an RV park in Pennsylvania, I think it was around Halloween. And we're like, oh yeah, it's Halloween. And all the RVs were decked out, ready for trick-or-treaters. This was in 2018. Oh, that's It was cool. awesome. It was like, this is so cool. Just So even themes around holidays and stuff, like yeah, those are things to look for. Yeah, you know, it's funny because that actually leads into the next question. Um, how great is the families? of the communities of campers. You know, when you're out there at the campgrounds and you see other families, how open and inviting are they? Keith and Tia? The, the kids get along great. Our, our kids have never had a problem making friends at the campground. I have one of my favorite pictures is we were at a, a campground in Orlando over the holiday season and the kids skateboarded and scootered for a week together and this little girl, they were a little, little bit little, littler back then, came over and had to get their shoes leave and had to give everyone hugs. And I have a great picture of the kids all hugging right in front of the door of the RV. And it's just those kind of things that when you're in a campground with other kids, they just, they just bond instantly. And it's about, hey, let's go play. Simple as that. That's beautiful. Dan and Lindsay, you seen any campgrounds that kind of stand out? Honestly, I was just going to kind of add to that because we you know, we kind of had to make a decision if we wanted children. And there was something about RVing and the families that RV that were so inspiring to us. And the children who are learning on the road, they're so much more, I think people worry about their social skills and they're so social and so mature. And it, it's, honestly what inspired us to do it. And we look up to you families so much. Oh, that's awesome. Dan? Yeah, just to add to that, I mean, really to echo that, we have continually been impressed, you know, before Miles when we were just RVing and, you know, meeting other, um, you know, folks that are traveling with their kids and just could never believe it how well behaved and just well adjusted these kids are. Right. And and they just seem to be slightly different in a good way. You know, it's just like they're 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 very well behaved around adults. They can interact with kids. They I think it's something to do with having to adjust so often and mm-hmm. and, and maybe or maybe I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but, but yeah. um, who knows? You know, we, I don't know. We know we're just working, right? It's always yeah. blown away. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jergies? Yeah, I actually really like this question a lot because it's so interesting. When I when COVID was happening, I was actually pregnant with Indy. Mm-hmm. And so we did find and, you know, RV parks were shutting down there. So we actually, we found, 
Yeah. Yeah, So we found a home. Yeah. They're good now, guys. Don't worry. Um, (laughs) But we found a home for a few months so I could deliver Indy and, you know, just kind of be safe. And it is so funny. I mean, it was COVID, but even in our suburb area, Mm -hmm. like just nobody talked to each other. Everybody kind of kept to themselves. But as soon as you get to an RV park, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's nature or just being outside or what, but I feel like it gives kids confidence, gives them freedom. And they're just, they are social and they're happy and they want to play with each other and they're not fighting over iPads. And it's like so good. And you don't get, I feel like we didn't get that in our neighborhood, but yeah. in our RV community, yeah. totally got it every time, and it's no matter like where we go. All age groups, they'll play together. Yeah. It's not just, oh, what grade are you in? I'm just going to play with you. Everybody plays and everybody plays well. That's right. awesome. And you have the best playground at the campground, nature. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, that's, yeah, that's absolutely. That, that's beautiful. Okay. Um, what about the adventurous teen boys? Any suggestions on campgrounds <laughs> that are good for them? He's pointing at us, Tia. Huh? Keith, yeah, I was going to say, that, that. that's actually aimed right at the Soulful RV family right there. <laughs> campgrounds, again, it, it's based on what your, your kids like to do. She told you I'm a planner. Mm-hmm. So wherever we're going, we will look at things in the area. We always look for, or I always look for, some good hiking. The kids love, absolutely love science museums. We have been in science museums from Miami to Maine. And if there's one in the area, we will do that. Tia loves history museums. We'll go to black history museums. We'll go to American history museums. So we try to plan out different activities. And that campground is just like our home. It's that center, that home base. So hopefully it has the things that we need, the pool, the playground. So when we're there, the kids have things to do, but we love doing the excursions. So when you're planning and thinking about campgrounds, it's not just the campground, it's things in the immediate area that you can do that's close by. And then of course, good food. Yes. Yeah. Tia, do you want to speak to that at all? Well, our boys are very active. So, I mean, it's easy to keep them engaged when we're outside. Mm -hmm. We have a football, we have a soccer ball, and we're outside, bikes, scooters, they're taken care of. I mean, boys are so easy. (laughs) (laughs) See, I mean... I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, hang on. Hang on, I got two. And, you know, sometimes it's the necessary evil. Sometimes. (laughs) We were joking about that earlier. But it is beautiful when you get a chance to see them get out there and get active and get away from everything and just enjoy in that community. I mean, it's it just... Like you were talking about with the communication and it just works. Somehow it works. It is amazing how they won't communicate in school. They won't communicate in the neighborhood, but they'll meet an absolute stranger at a campground and just be best friends in 20 minutes. I mean, it's the most amazing thing on the planet. Um, oh, Keith, did you want to add anything? It's okay. I was just going to say, you know, the beauty of, of boys, I know you don't have them, is <laughs> you don't worry. I certainly don't worry when they fall down. Right, right. They can right. get dirty and I'm all for it. Now, I have yes. an older daughter where if she hit the ground, I was running over and picking her up right away. Now, like in football, we say just rub an aspirin on it. That's right. You know, yeah, you know, just put out. dirt on it. Come on, you're ready to go. So with boys, it's easier to get out there and just have fun. Let them run ruckshaw. Have a good time. Give them food, water, and a little food, shelter. Yeah, food, and, yep, there it. you go. <laughs> They're good. Okay, this one starts off, help. How do you keep kids entertained on long trips? Jergies, coming to you first. You asking because of that 10-week tour that we had to do? <laughs> that potentially could be part of it. <laughs> oh, no, that actually was great. You know what is so interesting is that we actually, majority of the time, did not give Avalyn our phones, the right. iPads. Mm-hmm. We just didn't do it. Kind of what Bryce said. We took breaks. We went to parks. We went, got food. We went to the store. We did something fun. Um, And then we just spent time as a family as much as we can. Like we sang songs. We had dance parties. I know every kid's so different, but I don't know. I would, I don't know. Yeah. We had also time our trips, um, morning nap, afternoon nap. Okay. um, And then then play in the middle, you know. Yeah, we'd leave right after. So mm-hmm. well, uh, during the show, we'd go to the next start, the next destination. Right. So if it's in the evening, they're napping. So then they'd wake up. We'd have things for them to look for. I mean, colors, basically, you know. Yeah. And versus like, look for these words. Can't do that yet. Get right. Working oh, yeah, on yeah. it. They're, they're getting there. Yeah. yeah. They're getting there. And then yeah, we do have a tray set for AV that goes over, and it's collapsible and safe, mm-hmm. um, with her car seat that she can draw on. She colors. We put snacks on there. Indy just snacks and talks to us. Yeah. Right. And then we'll, 
if it gets bad, we'll pull over with her and then just go like relax outside and play and then we're good. Well, I mean, the, the great thing is, yeah, you're traveling with your home. So yeah, yeah you got a spot where you can go back, mm-hmm. yeah, relax, do the whole night. Now, Danny Lindsay, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier about how it, it's it's kind of changed where you used to go six, seven hours, but now you stop every two hours. Now, Miles probably doesn't need a whole lot of entertaining, but you still have to do the stops for him. Yeah, I mean, it's probably more based on feeding for him. You know, when he wakes up, he's hungry. Um, yeah. He sleeps the whole time. So right. we're we're like golden now, but I'm a that little That motion's worried. great, man. Yeah, that motion sleep <laughs> yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. right to sleep. But, but yeah, you have to be prepared for the moment you stop, he wakes up and he needs his bottle. And- right. That's always fun. Every time we pull into the campground, you know, you got to get out, you got to do the check-in. And I mean, every time he starts screaming and then, you know, because he's hungry, he's got to yeah. eat. And then they always, you know, the person comes up and they're trying to help me get to my site. And I'm like, listen, give me a map. I can figure out how to back in there. <laughs> Do you hear this kid back here? Like your your golf cart is too slow. Move out of my way, you know. So, um, but no, it's it's great. Um, but yeah, right now it's not too too hard, right, to entertain him at at the moment. With adventurous boys, that preteen area, come on to yes. you. How do you keep them entertained on those yeah, long tell trips? Us. <laughs> yeah, help us out. Here's a secret. Now, <laughs> um, I think it's great that we have a drivable, um, okay. which means the boys are able to get to the refrigerator and get a snack when they need to. Okay. I mean. So being turtle friendly might be key. You know. Okay. Um, also, they're able to watch a movie. They can listen to their favorite podcast. They have their iPads. So they're each listening to, they have their science podcast that they listen to. Um, KJ is is into a lot of um, gaming stuff. So he'll, he'll listen to his gamers. Yep. So. They keep themselves pretty busy, and I also make them bring books. So we usually, if it's going to be a short trip, we'll stop at the library before we leave, and each of them will have 10 books. Right. And they're expected to at least read one long book, okay. one long chapter book okay. for the trip. Yeah. And Do you set up like a not, reward system for that, or is it just you, you got to read a book? You have to read the book. I love <laughs> like, it. I love it. Yes. And tell me what it was about. Yes. You know? Parent goals. Yes, absolutely Damn. parent goals. And don't be afraid. To tell your kids, it's, and I do this all the time. We both do this all the time. Yeah. It's not our job to entertain you, okay? Our parents didn't entertain us when we were on road trips. Yes. Look out the window. KJ, Jason even likes to sit up in the chair. They're my co-pilot when I'm driving or her co-pilot when they're driving. Yeah. And we talk about what we're seeing. I'm talking about road signs. So I'm teaching them those things. Yeah. And that's a great opportunity. You haven't done this a lot when we go on boys trips, but I'll have them up front. And I'm like, okay, we got 45 minutes. This is your opportunity. Ask dad any question you want. And oh, I like start that. firing away okay. at questions. And they may not come up with some. We were right. recently selling our house and closing. So that was a great opportunity to really talk about the house selling process. What's it like? Do they have any fears, any concerns? So kind of talk to your kids too. Yeah. I mean, if you're on a 10-hour ride, it's it's, it's tough. It's a great but, opportunity. Yeah, you're, but you break it up. Maybe a little time on your tablets, a little time reading, a little time in a movie. Tell them, go take a nap. I wish I could take a nap on some of these trips. Right, right. Take advantage of that time and just bond together. And like you said, the podcast, the playlist. I'm teaching them my music. When nice. we were when yes. we were kids, we didn't get a chance to put on what we wanted to hear. I learned my parents' music because I was forced to listen to it all the time. Yep. And I love it now. So I'm teaching them the same thing. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Lindsay. I just love that because even Dan and I before Miles loved the long road trips because we would turn down the radio and we would just talk about everything. Yeah. Sometimes I think life gets so busy that you just don't have time to talk. And yes. I absolutely love that. That you yes. Take that time and. No, that's spot on because a lot of times we do not we don't get a chance to communicate in our own homes. But a perfect chance when you're locked in an RV going down the road to communicate, Bryce. Yeah, I realize that now. So my dad uh, had his own business doing construction, mm-hmm. and all the time he'd be like, "Hey, will you come and help me do this?" And it was things that I felt like he needed me to come help with. Right. And I realize now I actually made it take twice as long, <laughs> being there, but he did it for the drives. And he looked for those opportunities because that's how he was able to check in and see how are things with our friends. Right. What, what am I struggling with? What am I loving in life at that time? And so look forward to that because every kid understands I'm stuck in the car right now because we're yep. going to a destination. Mm-hmm. It's a good opportunity. I love that. And you know, it, it is funny how the, you mentioned your boys are listening to podcasts about gamers. My kid does the same thing. He watches videos of people playing games, of games that he has. I, I don't, don't get it at all. I don't get it at all. For me, it was at Atari. Yep. Right. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not even going to go down that rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> this one's great. 
What type of meals are great for kids, and how do I get them excited about camp cooking? Grill master. Come on, take it away. Well, my wife does a great job at meal planning. So when we're traveling, she has the meal plan. We always know what we're having when we get to the campground. Now, as far as getting them excited, uh, recently I took part in the Great American Cook-Off. Yeah, you did. Woo! This is something our family's always done. We've liked lo- watching cooking shows mm-hmm. on TV. We'll sit in our bed, all of us together. The kids will be in there. We'll watch these cooking shows together. So having an opportunity to compete in that, taking second, should have been first. No. Uh, <laughs> the, boy, the boys are more excited than ever. KJ, every time I'm grilling, will come out, hey, Dad, what are you doing? So I'm teaching him how to flip steaks to understand the temperature of meat. So I'm really kind of passing that tradition on to him. And the other boy's like, well, hope if, if, if you guys do it next year, can I come? I'm like, hey, you know what? Absolutely. have you. So, yeah. yeah. So if, cool. you, if you find an interest, if they have any kind of interest in it, mm-hmm. then just let that interest grow. Teach them. She does it part of homeschool. Cooking recipes, that's a great science lesson. I mean, all these things can help them learn and help them have that little bit of seed planted as far as cooking. Right. It'll definitely grow. One of the things I like, speaking of the Great American Cook-Off, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. Um, You did a smoothie that had greens in it, and you couldn't even tell. T, is that something you guys do to try to incorporate the change from just the burgers and the dogs when you're out on the road? Yes, um, because my husband is not a a vegetable person. (laughs) And I'm, for the most part, plant-based. That's, I don't eat meat at all. Okay. So we try to do, we play to our talents. So he's great with the meat and I provide the veggies and, and all the fruits and other things that his meal might be missing. Right, right, right. Wasn't there. <laughs> How do you prepare it on the road? I mean, is there anything different that you do? I mean, is, is there stuff that the boys won't eat at home? <sighs> there are a lot of things that the boys won't eat. Um, so you have to sneak it in. Right. But I love to have my um, air fryer and my pressure cooker on okay. the road. And that I've found one, an all-in-one air fryer pressure cooker, and that works for me. And it takes up very little counter space. And I make that work. And most of the, the RVs now come with the convection ovens. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. can bake it. I've done a Thanksgiving turkey on the road. So... That's but so awesome. nothing holds you back. Yeah. <laughs> nothing holds you back. Yeah, Keith. And after the Great American Cook-Off, the boys saw my smoothie. So yeah. now we have a Nutribullet in the RV. Okay. And All they're right. making their own smoothies just about every day. They're looking up recipes online. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that just, again, sparked that. They said, okay, I want to be That's able to cool. do this. I don't need your help, Dad. I want to do it myself. That's cool. Now, now, Dan and Lindsay, I know you guys traveled, you know, with the nieces and nephews and stuff like that. How, how did you get them into the camp cooking? I mean, Miles right now, not really worried no. about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just think kids love, you mentioned hamburgers and hot dogs, but yeah. cooking over the campfire is, is so fun. And they've said it a million times, just involving them and letting them be a part of it, I think is is the big thing. Is there something other than hot dogs and hamburgers that you guys like making when the kids are around? S'mores. <laughs> yes, yes. That's always a winner. That's the best dinner on the planet, man. Camp s'mores. Yeah, usually usually we do a big family like potluck, which mm-hmm. is so fun if you can if you can RV with friends and family. It's where everybody brings something and it feels like a community. So and the kids like that. That's awesome. When you get to the campgrounds, you guys do like group cooking at the campgrounds as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That see to me that's that, that's always fun when you know everybody's got like the big grills out in front. You can just come over and everybody's making things communal. Yeah. Now, Bryce and Nelly, you know, same question. You know, what do you make for the girls? A.B., what's your favorite breakfast? <laughs> I thought she'd answer it. Pancakes. Pancakes, yep. Yeah, she, everything about them, she loves it. So we have a, a step stool we got from Camping World that puts her up at the right height at the counter. Okay. And we have the griddle, and we actually blend spinach and put that in the pancake batter mix now. Really? And uh, yes, it, it makes them a hint green. Doesn't matter. You put honey on it, syrup on it. She loves it. And, uh, but she'll pour it that's, that's a great and she gets so excited about it. Yeah. And we burn a few cause she's doing it, but yeah, she's absolutely. involved and loves it. And yeah. she actually wakes up and says, I'm making pancakes, <laughs> you know, so that, that's a big thing. For us. Thank you for the new tip. Yeah. I was going to say, that's actually a great Sometimes tip. Sometimes we stick kale in there too. And it's great. I love it. Sneaking those, those veggies in. But you know what? I don't want people to think like, you don't have to like go out on camping food to be a <laughs> camper. Right. Totally cooked just normal meals and it's totally fine. If you don't like hot dogs, don't bring hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it is very nostalgic for kids. And I remember that as a kid, you know. Yeah. 
So definitely do that, but it's not hard. Just cook what you cook. Yeah. You want to make lasagna in the oven? Go bring it. it. Yeah, it's bring not it. hard at all to bring food on the road and to cook. Not Speaking not of, each one of you guys got to give me a favorite meal recipe and how to do it. You know, just one that you love making on the road, whether it's for kids or not. Dan and Lindsay, go. What's your favorite thing to make? Come on. I, I know cooking's not your specialty. Yes, I know. Dan's like, well, I got this Blackstone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably my favorite thing is breakfast. So okay. whether it's like breakfast tacos or... Yeah. Yes. I mean, Thank you. It's yes. Just the she best. said you got to smell bacon in the campground. That's um, yeah. It's a, it's a law. Look it up. And I just love those black stones because you can. They're like the king of breakfast. The, yes. You know. And so I, I I don't really have anything specific, but it has to be breakfast based. And if it can have green chili on it, even better. Well, breakfast taco. That's a win. Bryce and Nelly. We like bowls of stuff. Like we like to do rice and like sweet potatoes and avocados and then a meat of some sort. Like if you can just throw it in a bowl even for leftovers, it's a win. We're okay. big on like bowls. Easy, easy. Okay. And we do have a Blackstone grill now. And so I've been, I've done steak a few times on it. I'm geeking out about that. Just, right. I even got the thermometer, You're you so know, awesome. to stick oh. in. And, oh, wait until uh, you get the Which meat probably or, shows that I'm a newbie yeah. with it, but <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. I love it. All it's right. Like, keep the tea. We don't yep. need no thermometers. <laughs> I think uh, our favorite meal or their favorite meal because I no longer eat it. But um, on moving day, that's what our travel days. Mm-hmm. I will put a chicken fajita in the slow cooker and I put it on when we leave. And by the time we get to the campsite, ready to go. Woo! You can't Speaking do that. Soul. That's an award winning chicken fajita. It is so tender and so juicy and the right. Oh, I eat it for days. So that's how bread. you keep your kids behaving. You, you, you got, they smell the good yes. food and you're like, hey, if you don't behave, yeah. you don't get to it's eat. Fun. And they're like, yeah, I you see, can't do that I in a suburban. That that's way, that, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can catch the itis from smells. So, I mean, that's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, would you all say that, you know, pre-prepping a meal for the kids is also essential, especially on travel day? Yeah, def- definitely. We, we definitely try to plan it out and have that dinner because it depends how far you're driving. You're driving two hours, it's a little different. Right. And we drive three, four, five hours. Uh, we like to have that meal prepared or at least all the ingredients ready. And when we get to the cramp- campground, usually I'll take the boys out. We'll hit the playground or go out and stretch our legs and give her an opportunity to set up the inside right. and get dinner ready. And then we come in and we're starving. So we're ready to eat at that point. That's right on. Bryce okay. and Ellie, uh, do you guys pre- pre-prep meals for the girls before you hit the road? What do you usually Lots do? Lots of snacks. We do like salamis and cheeses and snap peas and blueberries. And we actually try to do pretty healthy because nobody wants a kid vomiting slushy in the back. You Spot know, on. like that's mm-hmm. just nobody's, Not nobody likes that. Right. But it's better than other yeah, true. And mango chips. You introduced me to mango chips during oh, the Yes. Oh, so mango, good. Mango chips are great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What items are essential for kids, when you're going on the RV trip, what do you have to have with you? Keith and T, I'm going to start with you guys. I think for, for us, there's lots of items, but the most important thing is we allow, and Tia spearheaded this, allowing the boys to bring one or two items that they love from home. Okay. Because that makes that RV that home away from home. Uh, my oldest son loves to bring his blanket from his bed. She mentioned Legos before. Uh, the two younger boys love these stuffed animals. They may have 30 stuffed animals in their room. We don't let them bring 30. Right. She'll say, pick out four or five. So when we're driving, they have that comfort with them. After that, everything else is easy. And of course, they want their electronics, their laptops and iPads, because we do make them learn a little bit while we're on the road. But sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. definitely something of their own that they get to pick out from their rooms to bring with them. And they cherish that. Right on. Bryce and Nelly? Wagon. We have an all-terrain wagon. It folds down and collapses. With these two at their age, I guess, and he's now offset, but they they love going outside and it just calms them down. They fall asleep in it half the time. And it's it's a good terrain one. Like th- there's little ones that are really struggle to pull, you know. This right. one's so easy. And we just go on a walk and talk and they chill out. And then that, and then something that encourages them to be active. Like she has a little little bike it's three wheels and she'll go hard on that wear out her energy and then you what were you saying I think that's a key one too wearing out the energy yeah something's gonna wear them out hiking pack hiking throw those pack. babies on okay. your back and go anywhere and they they love it they're in heaven when they're on our backs yes they, just, they can be there all day which one you get one get one that has like foot holds in mm-hmm. it 
because there's a lot that their feet just kind of hang and they can't sit there very long. But there's like foot stirrups that they can Ooh. stand with their feet and they last longer. They're happier. That's beautiful. Dan, Lindsay, y'all taking notes on some of that? Yeah, I, I, I saw you grab the mic because I know you got one too. Uh, well, I was going to yeah. say the carrying pack so that baby can walk around with us in the campground. Um, the wagon we just discovered like last weekend because we have so much stuff. But my nieces and nephews just bring, my, my sisters bring whatever that will keep them outdoors. You know, like they get to bring a few little trinkety toys and action figures and stuff, but soccer balls and and their bikes and shovels, rafts, yeah. anything that keeps them outdoors. Anything that will keep them outdoors. I love that. Dan, you want to add anything? You got anything? This is, I, I guess I wouldn't call this a necessity, but it sure is a nice convenience and it applies to our RV as well. We have a, it's called the baby Brezza, you know, where we, um, we do formula. So okay. this thing makes a bottle for your child in like 30 seconds. The warm is, uh, the, it's like a cure coffee maker for, for formula. Oh, it's, that's beautiful. It's awesome. That so, is be- and what's it called again? It's called a baby Brezza and it's amazing. Oh, I'm loving it. Look, Nelly, I, I just saw you light up. When- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, it, Let me get one of those. Yeah, I know. I didn't, didn't know about this. Yeah, so that that's why we don't boondock anymore, so we can have that thing plugged in. No. <laughs> well, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when you have the kids on the road, obviously games and activities are a big part of it. You're going to have camps. You're going to have stuff to do: hiking trails, water, the the whole nine. But what games have you guys found that kids like to play? while they're out on the road. Bryce and Ellen, do you guys have like any games maybe you've created or picked up along the way that folks may or may not know about? She'll watch us play games and then she'll just want to imitate the same thing. Okay. So we just let that happen. We have a deck of cards that can get folded, increased, and destroyed. You right, know? right, right. You got to. Yeah, we'll we'll play beats and then just make up words to songs. She loves doing that. Yeah, we do impromptu dance parties all the time. And then right now she's into match matching games. So um, we're flipping it over in front of the match. And she'll do that for a while. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Okay. Keith and we're excited you. for when we can do some more uh, in, uh, intelligent, you have to think, and strategy games with them. Right, you know? right. All right, Keith and Tia? Well, I think when we're outside, they, they enjoy cornhole. We usually mm-hmm. bring that with us. We forgot it this time. Um, but when they're indoors, maybe it's a rainy day. You've got to have something for them to do on those days when they can't go outside. So we have a, a game cabinet that we have board games. And they love Monopoly, believe it or not. So we have Monopoly at home. We've got probably five different Monopoly games. Not counting my collection. Not counting your unopened collector's items. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. We are a Monopoly family. And yeah. we will have that Monopoly board out for like two or three days just going at it. So. so who's the banker when you're playing Monopoly? Me. Because <laughs> everybody else cheats. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so wait a minute. Yeah, now, which unopened Monopolies do we do we not take on the road? I, I need to know this. Uh, some, some original Star Wars Monopoly. I actually have some Miami Dolphin Monopolies. I opened one of them, which, which I'm blessed to be in it. Right. Place. So, nice. That's so that beautiful. was good. That's just a keep for the kids. I've got copies for them. So besides the Star Wars and that, everything else is open. Man, that's beautiful. All right, now, now Dan and Lindsay, you know, you guys are really active too. What, what what games are your favorite to play when you're on the road? So every time we go camping with my with our whole family, there's scavenger hunts. And so you can go online and print off a whole list of what everyone has to find. And then it's like timed and everyone's motivated and running around outside and finding pine cones and sticks and all sorts of fun stuff. So it's an active, fun game and you don't have to bring anything because you just yeah. Search around. You can just use the area around you to create the scavenger hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's beautiful. Um, d- does anybody take chalk? Yes. Oh, yes, actually. I forget the chalk. Yeah, and then yeah. we have a tablecloth you can draw on. Yes. So, in, yeah, in every campsite, you got somewhere they can draw with the chalk. So Our boys love drawing on the campsite. The, mm-hmm. the, uh, if it's concrete, they're drawing on it all the time. They love it, yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd say it's, it's a great activity now. to keep them entertained. Absolutely. Um, do you guys bring bikes on the road at all for the boys, Keith we, and T? We, we do. Uh, we try to. They're, we actually left them down in Florida, so they've been complaining. You didn't bring my bike, Dad. So <laughs> they like. we have scooters, uh, human-powered scooters. They haven't transferred yet to motorized yet. Right. But, yes, we try to bring bikes and scooters because they love being out. That's why we love campgrounds that have paved roads so they can just go. So somebody asked too, is it essential to bring anything like a tent or a canopy uh, because it takes up so much space in the storage compartment or can we just leave it at home? 
That's kind of an odd question, but I thought, you know what? That might be something you want to bring with you. You know, Lindsay, Depends you're on where you're going. If you're going to be at a lake and you want to have like a date area, yeah. you know, you definitely want shade. We do that and post up for the whole day. And um, we just actually got um, one of the clam shell things. Those clam shells, have yes. The netting around the outside, mm-hmm. just because sometimes. In order to be outside, you you need to be protected from the bugs. Sometimes there's just too many out there, you know, too many mosquitoes. So we find that that's a great spot that we can be and still be enjoying outside, but also, you know, in the shade and, you know, just pleasant. So that we really like that. So I, I would say if you have it, I would bring it personally. Yeah. Bryce and Nelly, do you guys use a tent at all whenever you guys go camping? Not camping tent, but like canopy. Um, no, we, our awnings. Yeah. That we, we use those a lot. They actually, yeah, they, they make a big difference. Um, but you're right. Whenever you're going to a spot that's away from your RV, I think it's it can be a good idea. You yeah, got, we do have a tent, but we don't don't use it much. Yeah. Right. The only yeah. time we'll we'll obviously we use the awnings in our RV. The only time we'll bring something is when we're going to the beach, and then we want something some some shade while you're in the sand. Then we'll bring that cover. There was I remember we one of our RV neighbors, right? The RV community is so open and mm-hmm. friendly. And this guy was a he's got some best New York Times bestsellers. And he had a separate awning tent that was kind of his office. Mm-hmm. And he would sit there and it was like, okay, that's where dad's writing a book right now or doing some work. And I thought that, that was cool. He, he, they post up for a while there. So yeah, if you're going to stay for a while too, it could be nice. Yeah. So what are the kids' favorite part of the RV? What is, what is Avi's favorite part of the RV? Yeah, she's looking at an ant that bit her earlier. <laughs> We're out, out at a campsite here. Um, Favorite part of the RV, she loves the loft. So in our toy hauler, we have the living room, kitchen, and then there's a loft above. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the deck. We usually will just put that down, put down some play mats. And our bed. <laughs> our bed. Yeah, we put in a really nice bed in our room. And so she loves chilling out and sleeping, napping on there. Yep. Keith and you. I would have to go with the refrigerator because those boys are constantly hungry constantly going in and out of the refrigerator. We'll say goodnight. We'll close our door and all of a sudden we we'll hear the refrigerator door open. I'm like, we're like, what are you doing? It's time for bed. So they love the entire RV. They like to wrestle on the pullout couch and that kind of thing. Mom always yells at them, but uh, sometimes I dive in there too. Right, right. <laughs> now look, we talked about that at home too. You don't want the boys bouncing on stuff. It's a bad trait. Yeah. Get them bouncing on stuff in the RV. <laughs> they pull me on it. What can I do? You know, there are three boys against me. That's a tough battle. Yeah, no, you got to I still can take them it. right now though. I oh. still can take them. Yeah, for now. KJ, KJ's getting big and fast, man. Yes, it's, it's, it's coming. All right, Dan and Lindsay, I mean, obviously, Miles being an infant, but he is probably already, because you guys have been on so many trips with him, there's got to be an area that of the RV he likes more than the others. He loves his little changing table area because mm-hmm. there's a window and he can look out there and there's shelves, so we have little hanging, like, stroller toys that he can kind of play with. And then he loves the out area when we're when we have a campfire. He's mesmerized by the campfire, <laughs> so. That's actually a really nice little thing to do with the baby. Yeah, the campfire because the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelly, I see you smiling over there. Oh, I'm just laughing. My kids are just a wreck on this part of the panel. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what are you talking about? Everyone got bit by an ant. I'm just laughing. It's kids. But it's just the age. Your baby's like, a, you know, sleep and calm. Your kids are older. And my kids just want to be by mom and dad. So, right. But it's all part of the fun, right? Yes, it is. And, and you had mentioned your, your own mattress. One of the questions Ooh, was, yeah. is it important to get your own mattress or the mattress is okay? <laughs> really? I mean. Oh, they laughing over here. Yeah, Keith, here. I, yeah, I heard that guffaw a little well, bit. Well, we're not full time. Right. Uh, but we definitely, we, our, our mattress that came with our motorhome is still wrapped in the plastic yep. in our basement. Okay. Yep. Please get your own mattress. I've yep. had back surgery. If you're going to spend any time in there, and this is no disrespect to the RV manufacturers because sure. it's impossible. What I like, what we like is different what they like. Yeah, so absolutely. get your mattress because a good night's sleep at the campground is so important. It's worth it. It's See, priceless. We took our queen out and we stuck our king in. We don't have as much room in our bedroom, but we do not care because we love our bed. It's like, I mean, especially as a parent, right? You're just like, end of the day, you're going to your room, your kids are asleep and you're like, oh, my bed. <laughs> Yeah, when we've stayed at friends' places, they're like, "You guys are coming and have room." We're like, "No, we got our, our we love our bed. We're good." Yeah, like, well, seriously. see, I mean, that's, the, you know, that's the great thing about Camping World Gander. You know, we sell ma- people for a lot, a lot of times forget we sell mattresses. We have oh, the right. and they're good. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the comfort zones. They're they're out of this world comfortable, and the manufacturers are beginning to put a lot of like high density foam mattresses in there that are very comfortable. But 
to each his own. And if exactly. you really want to enjoy it, that's one of the things I always say. If you can, try to get your own mattress. If you're going to spend a lot of time, get one for the kids as well. Yeah, and we actually do use the RV mattress in ours, but we added, I think it's maybe two or three inches. The topper. Yeah. The topper. Yeah. You know, for, for our purpose, that worked out pretty well. Um, you know, we did. We had to, with a turkey carver. <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. That's great, oh, was, that's beautiful. It's pretty crafty, actually, and it worked really well. Lindsay was... <laughs> <laughs> just in there with a hot knife, just going to town. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you're comfortable. Otherwise, what's the point? You know? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, exactly. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for, for giving us this knowledge, spending time with us today, bringing the kids. If you can, give me one last tip for traveling with kids that you would tell somebody, that you would tell your friends? Dan and Lindsay, follow your detour, start us off. I, I would say, I mean, we just have an infant, and I think the first thing is I would just tell them that it's possible. I think a lot of people are afraid. They have a, you know, a, a, a notion that you need all this stuff for your infant. I mean, right. I know in our house we have so many you know, different bouncers and boppies and this and that, and we don't have that stuff in the RV, and so far, so good. So I would right. just say it's possible and go for it. Right on. Bryce and Nelly, the jerkies. Yeah, go for it. Go go try it out. Just you. Everyone that we talked to is like, yeah, we tried it out. You'll end up getting one, and it'll be a great thing. Like, yes, we were gonna do just one little trip, and it makes so many memories easier to happen. It really does. So. That's awesome. Keith and Tia, Soulful RV family, hit me. I think what stands out in my mind most is when we're talking to older couples and they are recounting their memories of traveling with their kids. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, one of our panelists up here recounted a memory that um, he he had with his family. So it it, it just, it's magical. It's something that your children will always have and you will always have. And the older couples that we've met have always just said, we're regretful that we didn't start it out sooner. Sooner. Yep, exactly. Well, gang, thank you so much. Keith and Tia, Soulful RV Family, Bryce and Nelly, the Jurgies, Dan and Lindsay, follow your detour. Thank you so much for spending time with us, giving us some tips that are hopefully, if you're brand new to RVing and you want to know how to get your kids involved, hopefully you found this helpful. Now, if I remember right, the Ultimate Outdoor Olympics will be starting very soon. So contestants, <laughs> you got a showcase coming up that you might need to go get ready for. But the Ultimate Land, Water, and RV is all about the fun and enjoying the experience of the outdoors. And we'll have more next. I'm Monet. I'm James. And we're going to share how RV camping has unlocked our family travel dreams. <laughs> Kennedy is the boss lady, as we call her, because she's always telling all of us what to do. And Jordan is our adventure junkie. Anything high in the sky, that's all her. So for us, family travel is just having uninterrupted family time. We're really just enjoying one another, discovering new things. One thing that our being in camping will teach you when it comes to family travel is definitely patience. With setting everything up and just being in such a close quarters all the time, I need help, please. it really teaches you how to work together as a family. Making lunch is easy. We can quickly make sandwiches and snacks whenever the kids get hungry. The RV is the yeah. perfect mobile kitchen. Well, you go like it. How many strawberries you want? Maybe five. I'm five. Oh. Who's able to Right? <laughs> so are we gonna go live on that island back there? No. Nah. Why not? You don't want to take a boat to school? A unicorn. So you'd rather ride a unicorn or a boat to school? Unicorn. Sun! Hi, sun. Camping allows us to slow down while still having a great time. What are you gonna do? We love doing campfires in the evening, making s'mores, and just relaxing. We love to be silly and have fun, and the RV gives us a built-in dance floor. It gives a sense of home base no matter where you are. Good night, Daddy. We can put the kids to bed, come outside, enjoy a glass of wine, and reconnect after a long day, which is something we're not able to do at a hotel. It has really just sparked an amazing love for us, a different way for us to travel that, that we really enjoy. 
Gander RV and Outdoors wants to help you and your family have an unforgettable camping season. No matter where you want to go this year, we have the RVs and camping gear and outdoor gear you need for any trip. Choose from our massive selection of camp chairs, portable grills, fishing equipment, hunting gear, outdoor clothing, tents, and so much more. This year, shop with the retailer that really knows what all kinds of campers need for their trips. Click, call, or visit your local Gander RV and Outdoors today. 